Let us see what happens to these same operations when we try to perform them on untidy data. So our second, uh, our first untidy data set is table 2. If you recall, table 2 looked like this. It displayed exactly the same information that was contained in table 1. But in table 1, we had country, year, and then cases and population as two columns. This time, instead of representing cases and populations as two columns, uh, for whatever reason, they've chosen to represent it like this. Right? So we've got country, year, cases, 745 cases, country, year, population, this. Okay. So cases, population, cases, population, that is repeating down here. So what should have been columns have now become uh, data values within cells. Okay. So let's try to do the same computation that we did earlier, namely compute the rate using this table, which is table 2. So in order to do that, we would somehow first have to generate this. That is the computation of the rate per uh, for each country for each year. So Afghanistan 1999, the rate would be, uh, uh, you know, 745 divided by this, which will turn out to be this. And Afghanistan uh, 2000, etc. Okay, we would have to somehow compute this. And then, of course, we want the data to be added back to the original data frame, uh, original table. Uh, which is table 2 and then we'll have to put it back down here which is added which means we'll have to add it back to table 2 this is table 2 this is what we compute so we'll have to add it back to table 2 using our bind right so this is what we would have to do in order to uh, compute the rate and add it back to the original table so this turns out to be pretty complicated whereas it was so simple with table 1 see what all you have to do with table 2 to get the same thing right so to do this we first have to uh, this is our table 2. So we are trying to compute the rate using table 2. So first we are going to extract the cases for each uh, country year. Right? So we are going to get all the cases by doing cases is a table which is table 2 a pipe to filter type equals cases. So what will happen is you will get Afghanistan 1999 cases 745 and then Brazil 1999 cases etc. Uh, and then Afghanistan 2000 cases and Brazil 2000 cases etc. Okay, so that's what cases is and populations again we do we extract the populations. Okay, now as given the fact that uh, you know the ordering is the same which is Afghanistan 1999 2000 cases population and then Afghanistan uh, cases population and then Brazil cases population so we are exploiting the fact that things are in the same order. So now when you get the cases uh, filter it like this you'll get all the cases and when you filter the populations like this they will all match up right so the first row of cases will be Afghanistan 1999 745 cases first row of population is going to be Afghanistan 1999 population and this value right so then we can easily compute the rate by dividing so we are saying rates which is the new table that we are creating is country equals cases dollar country Okay, because we need to, we, we are trying to create uh, uh, the something that we can just add on. So the first column is country. So we're putting the country. The second column is year. So for that, we are simply getting cases dollar year, or we could say populations dollar year. The third column is going to be the type. In this case, it's not cases or population, but it's rate. So I'm saying type equals rate. And finally, the last column is count, which is the actual value where we divide the two things cases dollar count divided by populations dollar count times 10,000 okay so we have to do all of these gyrations to get the same thing which we literally did in one line of code when the data was represented in tidy form okay so tidying up the data is really really important so once we have done all this we've got rates which is effectively uh, if you go back to the previous slide It's effectively this right for every country year combination we have computed the rate so this is what we've achieved so far so all we have to do is to now add it back to the original table and we do that by using the usual R bind right so we say table 2 is R bind this should not be T2 this should be table 2 comma rates let me change that right away
right so once we add it up you can now say table 2 is r bind table 2 comma rates so which is basically taking the old table 2 which is this and appending the new rates that we have computed right to the bottom of this okay so we have to do all of these gyrations uh, just to do something which we were able to do with literally one line of code when the data was represented in a tidy way so let's see what we have to do in order to achieve the same thing which is compute the rate using tables 4a and 4b okay so if you look at the tables they look like this right this time remember we said that 1999 and 2000 are supposed to be part of the year uh, part of the uh, you know uh, part of the main data set that is in the tidy representation we had uh, year country 1999 cases population that's how it was but now for whatever reason 1999 and 2000 have now become columns and we have uh, the cases in this table and the population in this table right so now we want to do the same thing which is compute the rates in this representation which means that what we'll have to do in order to stick to this representation is to create a third table which looks like this which is uh, you know country 1999 2000 except the values would now be the rates right so the uh, for cases it would be this divided by this and this divided by this and so on right? so every element will be the corresponding uh, ratio of the corresponding elements in these original tables okay so to do that uh, you know like I've said here we'll go with the spirit of the original tables which means we'll create a new table called 4c so we are saying now table 4c is table country equals for table 4a dollar country and then the value for 1999 so 1999 is an unusual column name and so we have to put it in back ticks is table 4a 1999 divided by table 4b 1999 times 10,000 and similarly for 2000 because 1999 is one column 2000 is another column you have to do the same thing okay so in this representation admittedly it was a lot easier than in the representation of table 4 uh, 4b okay uh, not 4b I'm sorry table 3 okay uh, table 2 this is a much easier operation but still it's a little clumsy but we did see that with table 4a 4b combination the process was a lot easier than we had with table 2 so why is this the case why was it easier right but even though the design was poor the job was a little bit easier than with table 2 because the computation was symmetric in other words to get the rate for Afghanistan 1999 we had to simply divide Afghanistan 1999 cases divided by the corresponding element in the other table in the other table so that was a little uh, easier okay so that is why it turned out to be somewhat easier let's try to recreate the plot showing the change in number of cases over time using table 2 instead of table 1 right if you recall that plot was a plot of the number of cases uh, across the two years for the three separate countries right now given that uh, in table 1 the number of cases was just one column right so we, we were able to easily plot it but now with table 2 the cases are not in one column right it's uh, the cases and population are together in one column so our first job would be to extract the cases by filtering and then perform the gg plot okay so it's not too bad but there's one extra step right so we say table 2 and then you filter it to only those uh, cases where the type is cases right after that the plot looks very similar to what we did earlier okay so I would recommend that you go back and look at what we did for plotting with table 1 and then take a look at this as well okay so the latter part of it which is the geom line and the geom point are very similar in this case except that we now had to do a filter before we did all of that which is an extra step that we did not have to do when the data was represented in a tidy way okay so altogether what we have shown here uh, is that if you represent the data using a tidy approach which is uh, one column per variable one row per observation and one cell per value if you follow that uh, that principle then a lot of operations that you have to perform 
turn out to be very easy. But if you break away from the tidy notion, then your operations start becoming extraordinarily complicated, as we have seen here. Okay, So that is why tidiness in data is something that is really, really important. Having looked at what tidy data looks like, we may have a genuine question which says, who creates untidy data anyway? Right? If you look at tidy data, it looks like, of course, that's the way anybody would create data. Who's going to go and create untidy data? But in reality, if you look at data, for example, if you look at some tables on Wikipedia, if you look at many other things, you will find the data are not in a form that is ready to be processed. It's not tidy. The reason is that although once pointed out, the principles of tidy data seem to be pretty obvious, it is actually not all that easy to figure it out by oneself. In fact, if you try to rigorously define what tidy data is, it's quite likely that you'll have a lot of difficulty trying to express what that concept really means. Okay. And the second thing is, often data organization is dictated by purposes other than the need to analyze it. Right. So sometimes uh, you may represent the data in a form that is suitable for a book, uh, most easy to understand. But that form may not be the easiest form to process information, right? So this is why you, you do see untidy data. But unfortunately, before we can process it and do things, we need to tidy it up. Okay. So what are some of the other causes of untidy data? Uh, so one is that an attribute may get spread across multiple columns. Or an observation may end up being spread across multiple rows and so on. Right. So now let's take a look at some methods for cleaning up untidy data. Right. So we have got examples of untidy data, which is uh, data in table 2, table 3, and table 4ab. Only table 1 we said is tidy. So now let's take a look at what all we would need to do to tidy up these other forms of data. Right. Now that will be really useful for you to look at because when you encounter some untidy data, you can always compare it to tables 2, 3, or 4, that is 4a, 4b. And then you can just borrow the approach that we are going to suggest for each one of those and uh, simply reuse it to make it tidy. That makes, a life, uh, that makes life actually a lot easier than for you to sit down and try to figure out how to do it by yourself. Because we'll show you for each of those cases how exactly you can tidy it up. So let's see how we will tidy up one of the cases. So consider the case of table 4a. We're going to just consider one part of it. So in this table you've got country, you've got the years 1999-2000 and you've got the actual number of cases. right? So what we really want is that the column names 1999 and 2000 are not attribute names but they are actually attribute values. right? Because we are saying in our data we've got a country year, that is Afghanistan 1999, and then we've got cases and we've got population, right? So even though 1999 and 2000 appear as column names here, we really want them to be uh, data values within our table, right? And similarly, these are all cases, right? So all of these four, six values represent the values of a single attribute called cases, but for whatever reason, they've got divided into two columns, okay? So although this looks like a nice table, it's not really amenable to processing in a very uh, easy way, right? So effectively, what we have is this. What we want is that, right? So we want a Af country, Afghanistan, 1999, 745. Afghanistan, 2000, 2066. Brazil, 1999, 37, 737. Brazil, 2000, 80,488, and so on. Okay, so this is really what we want. Okay, looking at it gradually, graphically, right? So what we're saying is take these column names, which are really data values, put them into one column called year, and take these values and put them into the appropriate place, right? So both of these are cases. All of these are cases. So all of these should go into one column. And these column names should go into one column, okay? So this is what the gather function accomplishes. So we take table 4a, then we say gather these two columns, 1999 and 2000. Effectively what we are doing is we are gathering the value in those two columns and putting them into one single column. Okay, that's what we are doing. And we are converting 
this row, which is the title row, into again one column with the corresponding things. That is, uh, 1999 will go with these values, 2000 will go with these values. So all of that is accomplished with this single call. Gather the columns 1999-2000, okay, and give the column name as year for the gathered column and take all these values, put them into a column, call them cases, call that column cases. Okay, so this is one nice way by which you have accomplished tidying up of this uh, table, which is not really tidy. To summarize it, you can look at it this way. This is the same command that we had earlier. So we specify gather, we specify the columns to be gathered and the new column name for this gathered columns. So right, so in this case we gathered 1999 and 2000 into one column called year and whatever value was under those two columns we put them into a new column called cases. Okay, so that is how uh, gathering works. This should be a double quote but it just turned out to be something other than a double quote other than a normal matching double quote. But when you type it in our studio, it will be a double quote. Okay, so this is a new column name. So this is what we really want. Uh, this is how we use gather. Now that we've seen how to clean up table 4a, let's take a look at how to clean up table 4b and uh, clean up the overall thing. So tidy 4a is what we just did earlier. I'm calling tidy 4b as a similar operation performed on table 4b. Everything is same except that the value is now population instead of cases. Okay, so that is done. And now we want to join both of these tables together, right? Because we've got country, year, and we've got cases. Country, year, population. Now we want to uh, join both of these together to form one larger table. And to do that, we are using this function called def join. Uh, essentially, you can see what we are saying is use the leftmost columns to match it up and then join the two uh, tables. Uh, but this is a function we will cover later on. Okay, so using all of these operations, uh, essentially what we do is we get back uh, what looks like table one, which is our tidy representation.